time. Renee Bingham is not able to do this this morning, but he is. Welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. We pray that you are blessed by the music and the ministry of the service you are about to participate in. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here and we pray that you are blessed. Now, if this is your first time, we ask that you let us know where you're watching from because we have people in so many different countries. And if this message touches you, if there's something that blesses you, please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, a heart. We just love it when you show your praise for what God is ministering to you. It's not for us, this is all about Him. So we want you to be a participant, not just an observer in this service with us today. And if there's some way that you need to contact us, if you have a question, if you need prayer, if you need a Bible, our information will be at the end of the video where you can reach out to us, you can call us, you can message us through Facebook. There's so many different ways, but mainly you can visit our central hub at godspeedministry.com and all of the information is there. And if you want to continue your worship through giving, which is always goes to God, then we invite you to do that also through our central hub, godspeedministry.com. Now, let's get into why you came into the message. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you this morning just thankful and grateful for the opportunity to come out into public and worship you, Father. Let us never take that for granted, Father. Thank you for this wonderful family of racers, but thank you for the fact that they are believers, Father. What a blessing that is to be able to race and, and stand side by side with my brothers and sisters in competition, Father. Bless this day with safety. Bless it with uh, functionality. Father, we ask for good conditions with track and weather. Father, grant us that. And Father, now I raise Renee up to you as she brings our morning message. Father, I pray that you work through her and bless her because of her efforts. Thank you so much for this opportunity. For us in Christ's name I pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. The title of the message this morning is The Incomparable Christ. And before we go to our scripture, I want, maybe, technology is wonderful when you have it ready and operating. Uh, so the word incomparable, incomparable, it, uh, it means without equal, beyond compare, unparalleled, matchless, without peer, without parallel, beyond comparison, second to none, unequaled, unrivaled, transcendent, superlative, unsurpassed, supreme, top, outstanding, unique, singular, perfect, par excellence. So today as we look at the incomparable Christ, I want you to think about all of these words I've just said. Does anybody or anything in this world stand out to you as second to none? Maybe all throughout history. Maybe in racing. I think of Big Daddy Don Carlos. You know, he's a pioneer. He's, he's one that is just above. The next one I think about is the Greek, uh, that at 92, he's still racing. How many of you know somebody 92 years old still out there racing? And much less top fuel of all things. God bless <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So these two are some that I think of as the prolative. What are some of your ideas? What is, maybe there's a hotel or a resort that is just that top-notch, or maybe there's someone in your life that has been top-notch, that has been above and beyond anyone else in your life. Anyone have anybody to share that comes up to your mind? I 
know it's early on a Sunday morning. We've been in that hot sun for three days, and the mind is just not as fresh. <laughs> we need some nitrous oxide or some turbo boost or something. <laughs> Yeah, right, there you go. <laughs> Maybe just a good boost of oxygen, which I now see they sell in cans and stores. I may have to try that before my next sermon. All right, so let's go to Isaiah chapter 40. And we're going to begin with verse 18. To whom will you liken God? To whom will you liken or compare God? Or what likeness will you compare to him? Verse 22 of the same chapter says, It is he that sitteth, that sits on the circle of the earth. Think about that. I know we see these images of Atlas carrying the world on his shoulder, which is not really true. But the mythology, we have that image and it's used a lot throughout the world. But God uses the earth as the circle of the earth as a place to sit and the inhabitants are as grasshoppers they stretch and then it goes on to say that he stretches out the heavens as a curtain think about someone who is so magnificent so large that they can stretch out the heavens with all of the universes the galaxies all of the different things and he stretches it out like a curtain and he spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. God created this earth as a tent. We have the physical, but he's also covering us with the tent of the heavens. Pretty amazing. And then verses 25 and 26. To whom will you liken me, God says? Who shall I be my who shall be my equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and behold who created these things, who brings out the host by number, who calls them all by names by the greatness of his might. For he is strong in power, not one faileth. God numbers the stars, he names the stars, he puts them in their exact galaxy, galaxies and locations, and they shine and tell his story. That's pretty awesome. And then we here, are, even though we are like grasshoppers, we are his chosen people. We talked about that yesterday as, as lights, as champions, as overcomers, as victors, more than conquerors, more than victors. Well, how could you win the race and yet go on to be something more? What else is more after you win this event today? And I know every one of you in here plan to do that. So uh, what, what is more than after winning this race? A world championship? Well, what comes after a world championship? Is there something more? But God says that we are more than conquerors. But here today, I want to talk about the one incomparable Christ. Jesus Christ without compromise. And I'm going to give you some comparisons so that you begin to see just how elevated the one we worship, the one who is worshipped. And as I go through this list, I'm, and I'm going to read the majority of it, if you want to jump in and hoot and holler, go ahead, because if we don't, the rocks will cry out. If we don't, the angels, God's already told me the angels are already excited about this message. And he told me last night that if we don't hoot and holler, he's going to send people in here who will in the form of angels. So this is your time to celebrate the incomparable Christ this morning. No man in the history of the universe can ever compare to this one matchless man, the incomparable Christ. His words were the words of wisdom. No one ever spoke like Jesus Christ. All other orators throughout all of history, the greatest, often modify what they say or they speak out of turn. Got that one. 
other, um, others re-examine their thinking or re-evaluate evaluate the philosophies they cherish. Boy, is that happening today? But he alone spoke pure words that flowed from the heart of the Father to him. Pure words. He never had to recall anything he said or spoke. He neither exaggerated an issue, he never spoke out a term, he never spoke a half-truth or a falsity. He never embroidered a statement, nor was required to retract any lessons he taught. Perfection. He did not have to apologize in word or deed, for there was no fault to be found in him. He maintained the highest moral dignity while extending courtesy to everyone in his path. He never had to plead for pardon, for all his words, ways, and wisdom were faultless. He never had to ask forgiveness, yet extended forgiveness to all who would come. He lived a sinless life, and so there was no requirement for him to confess sins. His words were always seasoned with salt, and his actions were full of gracious truth. He walked the path of righteousness. He lived the only sinless life in a world of sinners. We have a tendency to follow the crowd. We have a tendency to say, well, they got away with it, why can't I lie? We have a tendency to do what other people are doing. And we excuse ourselves because everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is doing it, but Christ alone held himself to a standard above and beyond. He lived each day of his life in submission to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. His life was a lovely example of the only way a man can live a life that's pleasing to God. And although fully God and fully human in his singular body, he laid aside his glory and he took upon himself the form of a servant and humbled himself to die on a cross. No one but Jesus could have taken the sin of the world upon his manly shoulders. Only he qualified as the perfect lamb of God. There have been many religious leaders, but all died, and their body remains in a grave. There have been many good teachers who teach God's word, but only he is the word of life. There have been many men who have influenced many people, but the Lord Jesus is unique in the kingdom of men, for he alone lived a sinless life, a life pleasing to God. Only he can claim, I am the way. No man comes to the Father but through me. There have been many characters throughout all of history, many kings, many carpenters. There have been many speakers in heaven, in history, many pioneers, many healers, many heroes. But Christ Jesus stands alone, for he is the incomparable Christ. Jesus Christ is the unique Son of God and the unique Son of Man. Christ Jesus is the chief among 10,000 and altogether lovely. He walked the path of righteousness. He lived the only sinless life in a world of sinners. He lived each day of his life in submission to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. His life exemplified the only way a man can live a life that is pleasing to God, and that fully God and fully man in his singular body, he laid aside the glory and took upon himself in the form of a servant. Our sins, he humbled himself to die for us on that cross. This is the teacher of teachers. This is the man among men. This is the orator of orators. This is the word of life. This is the incomparable king. This is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Tell me how you know him. Call out the names that you know in scripture that describes Jesus Christ. He is what? Yeshua. Yeshua, he is. The Father. What else? Yahweh. Yahweh. He is. What? God. He is God. He is Elohim. He 
Is that what I heard? Elohim? El Shaddai. He is my God who heals. He is the rock of my salvation. Jesus. He is Jesus. He is the Christ. He is the living one. He is the breath of life. He was there before the foundations of the world. He is the perfect Lamb of God that takes away our sin. He Amen. is that he is. Everything that you need is found in him. He is incomparable. He is mighty for every living thing, everything we need in this world. He is the word of life. He is the breath of life. He is the bread of life. He is the living water. He is worthy. He is worthy. There is nothing that you and I can seek. There is nothing you and I can look for in this world that cannot be found in Jesus Christ. Amen. He alone stands worthy. So as we pursue our lives, as we are trying to get more, and more is not a bad thing if we're going in the right way. I want more of Jesus. I want more of his love in my heart. I want more of his purity and holiness. I want more to be able to stand out. I want more light like we talked about yesterday. I want more of God and less of me. I want more of his strength because I can tell you the only way I am standing up here today after what I've been through recently is by the power and the might of Jesus Christ. Renee Bingham is not able to do this this morning, but he is. And I don't know when you get to those places in your life where you have nothing, nothing left to give. You don't need to seek a doctor. You don't need that. Now, I'm not saying anything against doctors, but I am saying your first and foremost need is Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you don't know him as your Lord and as your Savior today, if you don't have that relationship where you can just cry out, Father, in the middle of the night, in the middle of situations that this world is bringing to us today, we need to know that He is able. Can we just shout that together? He is able. Let's just begin to praise Him together. I'll lead you because I know it's been a hard three, four days in the heat and the humidity. So He is King. He is King. He is Lord. He is, Lord. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is Almighty. He is Almighty. He alone is God. He alone is God. He is my all in all. He is my, all in all. He is my strength from day to day. He forgives me. He infuses me with his power and strength. He alone is worthy of my praise. I will give him the sacrifice of my lips. Oh, we got a little more on that one. We're quite sure about that, all right? We got to work on that one. He alone is worthy. I will praise him. I will praise him when I rise. My voice, O oh Lord, shall you hear first thing every morning. Amen. And at the end of every night. I will glorify you in the high places. In the low places. I'm the whoa, we didn't get real uh, we dropped off there in the low places. You're not real sure about praising him in the low places, and I get that. It's kind of hard. That's where the sacrifice comes. I will praise you, O oh God. In the low places. For you are there. And I am not alone. I will praise you, O oh Lord. When I win this race. When I lose first round. <laughs> I will praise you, O oh Lord, for I am favored and highly blessed. I will praise you, O oh Lord, because you chose me in spite of myself. Woo! I will praise you, O oh Lord. For you love me. The same as you love Jesus. Oh, wow. Wow. That's what scripture says. That God sent John uh, 17. I, that he loves us the same as he loves Jesus. This incomparable Christ that we just read about, spoke about, that we're praising, that our almighty God loves us. Exactly the same. 
Lord. Praise you, Lord. Because it makes me happy. Does it make me happy? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I will praise you, O Lord. Praise you, Lord. For there is none other. There is none other. Today, Father, we lift you up. We lift you up, Father, with the words of our mouth, with the joy of our heart. Father, you tell us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So today, Father, we have just come to praise you, to honor you, to lift you up, to magnify your name. For you alone are worthy of praise. You alone receive the glory. And Father, I thank you that this, this group of people love you, praise you, and they worship you in all of their ways. Now, Father, just Fill them, infuse them with your spirit today so they walk with a spring in their step, that they glow where they travel, and that people know they have been in the presence of the Lord. Father, you say you inhabit the praises of your people. And today, Father, we praise you for being among us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service of the music or whatever you saw or heard, touched you, and you want to reach out to us, please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704-473-4212 or you can get all of our information at godspeedministry.com we want you to know god personally powerfully and passionately because we are preparing to become his bride when he returns for us or when we leave this earth so we want to make sure that you have that relationship with him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. To be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in the messenger, and again at GodFeedMinistry.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with Him, leave us a heart and let us know. And we'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.